Hello and welcome to this video on painting custom quarantine masks. This will be my first one using my floral branding that I've recently updated and designed. So I first did some digital mock-ups of the masks that I wanted to do on stream. I stream over on Twitch and it's a really, really fun community. Lots of fantastic people to, that are also artists, also streamers, and just some people that really just appreciate watching art or just hanging out. Um, so here I just took pictures of me wearing the mask and put them in on my iPad in the program called Procreate and I did a couple different designs. This is actually my third one and um, used some of the, the feedback from people in the stream on the designs. And recently I was really trying to refine my branding and make sure it was cohesive and something that really represented especially my streams and the environment that I try to have on my streams and so I've come up with these floral designs and lights and things like that so the first mask that I wanted to make I've, I've made or designed four total so far this first one I wanted to use my branding kind of to um, enter into the mask painting to start with as a more kind of simple process but also then I've got something that really matches my designs well so once I picked the design that I wanted, um, like I said, I went with this, the third design. I didn't show my first two on here. I then went through and was practicing kind of colors and what colors were gonna go where. While I was doing this, I was just hoping that I would be able to find paint colors that match these as best I can because it's really, really hard to match traditional colors to digital because you've got the glow of the computer, or in this case, the iPad screen. And then now it's time already to start on the mask itself. So I used a white charcoal pencil to lay out my design. I didn't have any kind of like fabric uh, chalk pencils or anything like that on hand. But this actually worked really well. It didn't really rub away too much when I was flipping the mask back and forth. I ironed the masks before this, washed and ironed them so that they were a flat painting surface, which did mean it, you know, I was having to flip the mask back and forth. And the way they are set up, um, they do have kind of like a pouch to them, so you can't lay them completely flat. Some of the other masks that I own, uh, you can lay completely flat. I also, throughout this process, really had to think about how I was going to go about painting these. This design is actually less complicated than my other one, so it wasn't as crucial. But with painting, you have to work from the background forward, else you're going to be trying to paint in between lines and designs and it's just going to be an absolute headache. So I was thinking about what was going to be the furthermost color in my design because when you work digitally you have a lot of flexibility to add things behind or in front of what you've already done. And so I knew from my designs on the computer that the furthermost back color was going to be this light teal color that was the color of the leaves. For this I am just using acrylic paint this in particular is heavy body acrylic paint. I don't have any fabric paint on hand and I also find that fabric paint is quite often very transparent and I wanted a really kind of thick, bold, opaque paint for this. And for the most part, acrylic is waterproof, but I am going to be looking into seeing if there is a sealer or something like that that I can buy at a fabric store or something just to give it an extra level of protection to make sure that when I wash them, probably hand wash them, that it doesn't ruin the paint. But overall it's, it's held up pretty good so far here. Painting the petals ended up taking at least two coats each just to make sure that it was pretty opaque. Um, sometimes you'll see me take the mask away and I'm, I'm going over to a hairdryer and drying the paint that way so it dries a little bit faster. Um, all of this is done in hyperlapse so it's way faster than in, in real life. This took me probably two and a half, three hours to paint total plus like about 30 minutes or so to design the mask on stream. Now that the petals are done, it is time to paint on the stems. And again, having to think about the order in which to paint them from back to front, because I do have two different colors of stems. The kind of just leafy bits 
are a darker blue than the kind of daisy flower-esque bits. And so all the leafy bits are further in the background than the flowers are. So I'm just going around and outlining the stems and where the little leaves are with this darker blue. I did have to mix this blue a little bit lighter than I typically use for my digital branding style. That way I, I just wanted to make sure that it really did show up on the mask really well because the mask is black and quite dark and I wanted to make sure that it didn't completely lose itself. I did end up, you can see a little bit here, going in with a darker blue and adding some details on top of it to push some parts of it further back and add just some texture to the work so it wasn't just a plain line. Painting around the center of the mask was pretty challenging, especially trying to get the lines to line up here. So I've just been going through with the same color, you know, painting the left side, painting the right side, and joining them in the middle. Or in the case of the stems, just to make sure that they lined up here, I dried the left side and I painted where it bridged over and I painted it enough over the edge to where then when I laid it flat, I could still see it. I think when I do the designs for the other masks, this is going to be even harder because for a lot of them, there is a lot larger, like flat color going across it. And I don't think that there's a different way that I can iron them that will do it better because like I said, it is kind of a pouch shape. Speaking of, I did notice later on actually in this video, not even at this point, I am actually painting this upside down. It's really hard to see when you lay it flat. You can actually see it best from this angle where the sharper curve is there on the bottom of the mask is technically where your nose should go. However, when I was sketching this out, I was laying the mask flat where you can have the pouch kind of sticking up and it is almost impossible to tell which direction is supposed to be up that way. However, it's still very usable. It just isn't quite as like ergonomic or comfy for your face. I figured out you can actually just kind of fold down the top around your eyes and you can almost not even tell the difference. And it really didn't bother me as much because this was my first mask and it's the simplest design. And it actually gave me a mask in that sense that I could play around with. So I'm gonna play around with trying to seal it. I'm gonna play around with, can you iron it with the paint on it? I'm gonna play around with, you know, can you, you know, machine wash it or things like that. And if it gets ruined, I'm not gonna be all that upset because it is my kind of fluke one, it's upside down. So here I'm going through and painting the stems. So you can really see now that it is a different color Again, I did lighten it more than some of my digital work just to make sure that it was distinctly different than the other stems. So it's a little lighter than I would want, but I really do like how it turns out. I also gave these the same treatment I did as the other stems where I mixed a little darker blue and gave it some darker spots to push those back and give it texture. At this point, I can really see how the design is coming together and it's time for the flowers. These are a lot easier for me to do digitally because I usually do the lines first and then fill in the color. So it's hard to get the shape right with the base color first. For these, I mixed a light gray color to paint down and then I went over it with the texture again, but with a white instead. So the gray showed through where the white paint was kind of thin and a little bit uh, crackly or wrinkly. It's kind of hard to tell at this angle, but there will be a close up here soon that you can see it a little bit better. And just like with the blue petals, I did have to go over these with a couple coats to make sure that the paint was opaque enough and the fabric just didn't show through. There's a difference between making it look kind of thin and textury on purpose and just not putting on enough paint. And 
here you can see the close-up of brushing on the white paint. It's a little easier to see the difference between the gray and the white. It's very subtle, but it's just enough to give it enough texture. We're almost done with the design. At this point, I take some soft-bodied like liquid acrylic paint to do the uh, centers of the daisies because it's easier to do a little swirly design with them. And then the last part of the mask is to make the kind of glowing bits. And my design there technically, I've got candle or not candles, but little lights, like fairy lights along the top. And then I also have these little flowers like baby's breath that are like a gold color that come up. So this is kind of reminiscent of both. And it's just made by dotting on a medium gold color. And then on top of that, a dark gold color and on top of that a lighter gold color so it looks like it's glowing in different kind of ways and there we have the final mask i am so happy with how it turned out i think it looks very summery very bright i love the contrast of the blue and the yellow and especially those bright pops of kind of gray and white i really really do enjoy how it turned out and i'm pretty proud of it of course, I've got to show you how it fits on my face. Like I said, it is upside down. So instead of going straight across, it should curve a little bit, but it still works quite well. So thank you for watching. Please stay tuned because I do have at least three different mask designs planned for the future. And thanks for watching.